Hello and welcome back to Doz's Television Workshop. It's another VIC-20 video. Uh, this time we'll be putting the machine back together, cleaning the case up, making it look a little bit more well, cleaner than it does at the moment. Um, we'll be having a look at the C2N cassette drive, seeing if there's a fault, any faults on there, putting those right if there are, uh, getting it to load to a, from a cassette. We've got some cassette games. Um, we want to have a look at uh, what functionality the Hyper Expander provides us with that we built. Um, and uh, yeah, just generally have a bit of fun with it, I think. Let's get into it. Uh, this is where we left our machine more or less last time. Um, I've done a couple of very minor things. I've stuck a, one of those sort of self-adhesive heat sinks onto the VIC to try and uh, give give that a good long life uh, and I've also put a bit of hot melt around this socket this was very intermittent previously that's the power socket so um, what I've done is I have uh, just tensioned the the uh, receptacles inside the connector a little bit and also every time I pulled it out it would pull the pull the thing out with it which was not ideal so um, a bit of hot melt glue around there has uh, affected a decent repair that far so that's our main board sort of dealt with at least for the time being so i'm just going to put that carefully on the back of the bench for now uh right we have got the case which is horrible to be honest uh yeah it's not uh, not the cleanest and tidiest vic in the world is it so I think what needs to happen there is a thorough deep clean. We'll take the keyboard out. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little screws there. We'll take the power LED out and we'll go and give this a very good, decent cleaning. So uh, right, out with the screws. Oh, that's tight. Let's uh, go the easy way. Is tight. <laughs> doesn't bode well look somebody's spilt something in there and time's gone past horrible right i'm going to remove the led from its bezel if i can it's one of those parts that sort of snaps together will it come apart after 40 years You know what, it will. <laughs> Good, that fantastic. Oh. That's it. 
should then pop out the front. And that's ready. It's an original burlap. Good Lord. Or is that part of the vinyl sticker? Either which way, it's gone. Okay. Now, these stickers. Oh, excuse me. We need to make a, a decision on what's going to happen with those stickers. I've got a sneaking suspicion they're vinyl and they'll suffer being moist, all right. So uh, that's good. Right. Let's have a look at the base. So we got our RF shield, which just lifts out the way. I think that's a piece of label I used to when I labelled the ROMs up in the last video. And again, this is a plastic style sticker. So I think it'll survive a bit of moisture. The bottom of the case really isn't too, isn't too bad. But uh, I know what this calls for. It calls for a good go in the dishwasher. One thing I suppose we'd better do before we uh, spend too much time on the keyboard is to um, actually see whether it works or not. So, because we may have, we may still have a, an interface fault on the on, on the motherboard. I don't know, but um, we're about to find out. So, keyboard plugs in that way around. I believe, yep, there's a missing pin at one end. There we go. Need the power lead, of course. Switch on. Okay, we've got video. So does the key, do the keys work? Oh. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, plus, minus. Clear up there, yeah. It's a delete, yes. Do the cursor keys work? They do. Uh, Unstop and restore, yes. Oh, outstanding. Keyboard feels good as well. Yep, that's all. Uh, all working as it should be, but look at it. Fabulous. So we've got no electrical or indeed mechanical faults on this keyboard. It's just oh, filthy. Good. Let's get cleaning up, I think. So, yeah, we're going to have to pull all the keycaps off. I haven't got a keycap puller, so I've always got away with using the chip puller. Although, this could be time to go out and buy one, maybe. Especially if we're going to do a few of these micros. Oh, come on. Oh, that's it. There's F1. Ah, coming off quite easily. F3 and F4. F5. There we go. So. Must be said, it would be so much easier with the correct tool. Anyway. The long and suffering Mrs. Dawes has gone out for the evening.
Right, well, the dishwasher's doing its thing. I just uh, clean the worst of the stuff off this keyboard with a paintbrush. Yeah, it's instantly looking a lot cleaner. Uh, we shall give it a little dosage of my favourite amber sill, no, service oil foam cleaner 30. Yeah, good stuff. It's got a touch of ammonia in it. And just be careful, if you ever clean the front panel of a Technics amplifier with it, uh, it will clean the legend straight off. You do need to be a bit careful and test it on a, on a, uh, test it on a, a discreet area first. What's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, there we go. We'll just work that in there. We don't want much. We don't want to flood the switches or anything. So, Mm, instantly, loads and loads better. Mm. And uh, just wipe down with a bit of kitchen towel. horrible isn't it still that's uh, certainly a lot nicer now I wonder if there was ever a a connector that uh, was like a, a sort of long edge connector it sort of fits on there look rather than these individual wires was he meant to plug into some sort of socket maybe on a ribbon anyway obviously not implemented here so there we go we shall put that back to one side now and uh yeah we shall wait for the case to come out of the dishwasher and in the interim time let's cast a look at the uh c2n cassette unit So there we go, data set, model C2N. Even got the polystyrene parts. There it is, my goodness, it's yellowed, hasn't it? Now this was the earlier sort of C2N. Later sort, which I think I've got a couple of them. The later sort, sort of a, a lozenge shape and a bit more slim, but this is... Uh, this is the original one I remember my mate Rod having. There we are. So, um, let's find the pin out. Put some power into that. From oh. There are things rattling around in there. We shall need to obviously create some power for the uh, bespoke connector. And uh, get some power into the unit just to see if it actually works. But I think it may be worth an inspection first, just to see uh, what's rattling around inside. Okay. Let's get a screwdriver. Made in Taiwan, the Republic of China. There's a few, is that? Can't make up my mind whether that's glue or a crack in the plastic. I think it might be a crack. Right, we're going to need a different style of screwdriver because that one's not having it. Ah, that's got on it, even if it's not quite the right thing. Ooh. 
Okay. Well, that's interesting. What's that? Oh, <laughs> I know exactly what that is. That is a piece of tape. <laughs> oh dear, it's obviously uh, given somebody some problems in its life. So what is rattling around? Ooh. Some little bits of paper. Do you know what? I bet that was. I bet somebody wrapped a bit of paper and stuffed it in the right, right protect switch at some stage. Right, this belt is absolutely shot. You can see here, just as you can see, there's a sort of wobbly bit moving back and forward where it's just been in the sat at the same time. It's actually still got a little bit of elasticity left, but not, not much. So um, I think what we're going to need to do is have that belt out and have it changed. So, uh, yeah, what we're going to need is the box of belts. So, uh, there we have it. Uh, it looks like our capstan is held on with one, maybe, maybe two screws there. So if we take that out, uh, we can then get the belt out. Oh, looking at that, I wonder if we can just lift it up like that. Take the belt. Oh, we can. Look at that. And you can see that belt has just taken the shape of where it's been sat for all those years. And when we go to play back, every time that kink goes past the motor, we'll get a, a bit of a, a wow in the tape speed and uh, it'll corrupt our data. So we need a new one of those. So I'll just put it on here so you can see it better. Look, look at the contrast to it. We shall need the box of belts which is over here. I must get some replenishments organised soon. But uh, let's see what we've got. That's uh, very much too long. That is uh, very much too long. Oh, what's that looking like? No, that's a flat belt, so we need something with a, a, a square section to it. So, uh, much too big, much, much too big, much too big, yep. 346 minutes later. It just looks too small. Uh, wretched, wretched, wretched. Let's order up uh, the correct belt. Right, it looks like the, the belt's going to be a couple of days away. So, um... Let's take a look at the tape path. And uh, also we're gonna need to clean this case up, aren't we? It's very yellowed, unlike the Vic 20 itself wasn't too bad. And it's actually come back out the dishwasher now and it looks fabulous. But this one, yeah, it's really yellowed. And you can see the difference underneath. Um, anyway, let's get that uh, tape path examined. Let's get this door off. So using a, a sort of flat blade screwdriver, door has two wings down on either side and if you get the screwdriver in there just hook the wings out don't go mad it's very old plastic now it won't be good and that's the door just hinges straight out the way uh, you'll notice this groove here has a, um, a little bit of grease in it I should have yeah it's still a little bit greasy uh, that uh, it uh, is for the spring to run in and this spring just uh, gives the door its encouragement to open so um, yeah that's that's why that's there so uh, the latch the, the latch mechanism you can see just there and that just sits in that groove there that'll become apparent in a minute right tape path gosh um, so we've got uh, a raise head, record play head, and of course the capstan and pinch roller. And they look beautiful actually. The raise head's got a little bit of muck on it, but the pinch roller, it's got a slight 
groove in it. It's uh, still got it's still quite rubbery, so that's good news. Let's give it a dose anyway. So to do the heads, um, we're going to need some IPA and uh, a cotton wool bud. Running low on IPA. There we go. Just get that a little clean. Same with the playback head. And same with the capstan. Now the pinch roller on the other hand. We're going to use a little bit of a rubber roller restorer. Because it's a rubber roller and it wants a bit of restoration. So, uh, yeah. This is not an aerosol, by the way. This is a pump action sort of thing. So we get a bit on the end of our, the other end of our thing. I've um, recently heard people... I mean, I always used to use IPA to clean pinch rollers. I've known a lot of people recently, they're saying, well, it causes it to go hard. And I can sort of believe that. And now these things are getting vintage. Look at that coming off there. Now these things are, you know, of an age. We ought to sort of be looking after them a, a bit better. So let's just get that cleaned up. So I'll put it into play to hold it steady while I sort of move it about with a Rubber Roller Restorer. Right, let's go and get another cotton wool bud. Used by 6 2019. Oh dear, we didn't manage to use it all. Still all right. You can actually feel the the surface of the rubber sort of becoming less hardened. That's good. Right there we are. Um, I'm going to need to remove the mechanism from the case so we can get the case uh, into the dishwasher. Um, so yeah, let's tackle that. So I didn't screw the base back on. That can obviously go in as it is. So the base is attached to the case. One screw there. One screw there. Do you know what? That's all I can see. Surely there's a third. Ah. It's a third through that hole in the PCB. So through the two holes in the PCB. And the fourth one, I think, is held on by, yeah, by the base itself there. It sort of crimps it up, I think. Right, so um, let's get those out. That really isn't the right screwdriver for the job. One, one down through here. Let's retrieve that screw before it uh, before it goes missing. There we go. Oh, brilliant. Right, that should be that. There we go. And we can also gain access to the tape counter belt, which is uh, just there. There's a bit of dust in there, but uh, generally things aren't too bad. Interesting note as well, there's still two blobs of paint on the hate tape head alignment screws, look. So that's good. OK, what are we left with on the case? I'm just going to put that carefully to one side. 
uh, with the we have got the latch that holds the cassette door that's retained by a spring I think I'm going to leave that there because that's been melted in uh, this spring on the other hand which opens the cassette door we can remove and I'm going to do so also there are two foam felt pads there presumably to damp the cassette door as it comes up against there against those two latches so if I sort of do that you can see they would have uh, damped that stop it banging against the plastic um, I'm going to remove those before the dishwasher does and we'll find something nice to re replace that with later on I'll tell you what that glue is good have we got a date for this thing is there a date code on it anyway I wonder there we go they might have survived but let's have some new anyway I think Glue is very good. What you've got to admire about a Commodore product is they were always well engineered. There we go. Right, and you can see just the difference in the in the yellowing and on the inside of there. Looks like it's going to be a job for some kind of retro bright. And uh, living in the UK, albeit summer at the moment, and uh, last time I said this, I got it awfully wrong, didn't I? Because we did the sharp outside in the sun. But, um, yeah, the, the, the weather's not been very kind to us at the moment, despite the fact it's summer. It has been very, very warm. It's not so good at the moment. So we could possibly leave it outside, but I think the, the best thing to do will be to immerse that into some uh, hydrogen peroxide for a couple of days and uh, maybe warm the hydrogen peroxide up a bit. That should uh, bleach the case back to something approaching normal. Well, as it turns out, there's a bit of sunshine. So uh, we'll leave that to de-yellow for a bit and uh, see if it makes any difference. Right, so that's fit for the dishwasher. Brilliant. Um, I shall... Uh, Wait till the long and suffering Mrs. Dawes goes out and sneak it in. So I'm going to put all that to one side. Um, one thing we have got back, there's our belt. One thing that did come back for the dishwasher is the Vic 20 case. And look at that. Um, I'm just looking at the colour difference on the plastic between inside and outside. And yeah, it's, there's a bit there, but it, it's not bad, is it? It has come out beautifully. So I don't think we're going to be uh, immersing this. So all, we got, all remains to do really is to put that back together. And um, yeah, let's start with a keyboard. So here we are. There's the uh, keyboard. So it's... Uh, refit all the springs and refit all the keys yeah let's get on with that just off shot here i've actually got the cardboard sleeve um for the computer because uh quite simply it's got a lovely picture of the keyboard on it and that's going to help me uh get all the keycaps in the right place talking of keycaps we're going to want those there's a bag of those they've been through the dishwasher uh, in the cutlery department, the cutlery holding thing. Um, yeah, so let's get on it. That's interesting. I have failed to pay attention. There's two different sizes of spring. I wonder where the long one goes. Space bar, perhaps? We shall see how many of how many long springs they are. Yep, 
Yay, we haven't lost any. And I think that one taller spring is for the is for the space bar. Right, off we go. Uh, cursor left, right is that one there. Beautiful. Um, one thing um, I read on, I think it's Rick's, is it Rick's stuff YouTube channel, is, uh, you know, retrowriting these keyboards doesn't work well. These ones, because where the keys are cast, if you look at the other side, you can see it's white plastic um, with brown sort of cast over the top, and they don't retrowrite very well. Uh, not that the yellowing on this, again, it's not certificate, it's not certificate, it's not significant rather. So we can see the, the front legend, the Petsky characters are a little bit brighter than the keycaps themselves, but yeah, I don't think I'm worried about that. Right, let's get it back in the case. So, okay. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. And two of these, if you look at the pillars, they've got sort of like uh, proud parts, and that's to center the keyboard up. So we'll get that in there like that. And we can see those proud parts are just coming through there to center up the keys. I'm just going to do this on my lap, but just out of shot. <laughs> just because it's once we've got two in, then it'll all be uh, at the right sort of level. But until then, it's going to be difficult. There we are. Excellent. So we'll just put the rest of those screws back in now. Reassembly of the LED. Uh, here's the uh, bezel. So snick the bezel in the hole. Just push through there. Uh, it will fall out. Get the LED and uh, pop that in the back of there until it comes through like that. There we go. Locking ring is still on our lead from before. That then drops down. And with a bit of persuasion, we'll lock the LED into place on the front panel. There. Terrific. Okay, well we're making progress aren't we? So I'm just going to put the top part of the case down there, the bottom. Again, there is a bit of yellow in but it really is very minimal. I'm just going to move my cardboard sleeve out of the way because I don't need to look at the keyboard map anymore and because the motherboard was behind it. Right, so, there we go. Uh, if you're joining us at this bit of the video and you haven't seen part one, um, we did repair the uh, electronics. So go and have a look at that. Okay, so I also noticed I needn't have taken out that screw there, by the way. That screw there is just to hold the metal uh, switch panel onto the PCB. So I needn't have removed that when I did it all those weeks ago. There we go. Pop that back in there. So let's get it lined up.
That's it. All the screws are now in. Brilliant. Um, and just because I've got a terrible paranoia about this machine now, it gave us so much trouble with the electronic repair. I am just going to uh, give it a quick power up to be sure all is well. Oh, beautiful. Good. Right. Excellent. So there we go. We can now put the lid back on. Uh, keyboard connector, missing pin, missing pin. So you can't get it the wrong way around. LED. Now, I don't believe it makes a blind bit of difference which way you plug the LED round. I know it's on a three pin connector, but I think it's sort of ambi. And you'll say, yep, that's working. So epic. at that. I was going to say I've got no display but that's because we haven't plugged it in. Oh, brilliant. There, look at that. Hello world. Twenty go to ten. That old chestnut. R shift U which is shortcut for run. There we go. Hello world. Beautiful. <laughs> there, right, let's just stick the case back together. Ooh. These labels, by the way, as predicted, um, undamaged in the dishwasher. So that's very good. There are three screws for the case. They're all long ones. One. Two. That is lovely. I'm really pleased with that. Good. Right. Um, now we just need to wait for the belts and finish off the C2N. Right. Well, we've been on eBay and uh, bought myself some more belts. Look, there we go. In fact, uh, it was so inexpensive. I've gone and got a lot of belts. So that's good. We should have some uh, to replace the belt in the C2N. Uh, talking of C2Ns, I've also gone and got myself um, another... Uh, C2N style uh, plug for the back of the computer so that fit a PET, uh, a VIC-20 or a C64 um, so we can use that for the C2 interface I also, because I've had to make myself some more ROMs for the cartridge I bought myself these EEPROMs um, which turn out to be slide I haven't done the uh, oh, come out the other end I haven't done the uh, acetone test or the IPA test on there but if you just look at them you see that side's very black well this side is uh, isn't very black I thought it'd be quite safe with EEPROMs but now they're going to go these as well these purport to be ST uh, M27C64A-10F1s they're not um, I'll put them in the programmer the TL866 Mark II and um, requested the ID and they are 27 uh, C64s, but they seem to be some sort of national semiconductor ones, uh, which is fine, I suspect, but they're not, not as advertised. So, um, yeah, the eBay have uh, given me my money back on those. So whether they'll be any use, I don't know. But uh, we'll try. They're free, aren't they, I suppose, at this point. Uh, something else happened um, while we wait for the stuff to come up uh, from eBay. We had a summer. 
the weather's going to be really good next week. So I left um, the C2N in the garden, just the case. And look how well it's come up. I mean, it's not perfect by any means. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot better than it was. I mean, that was jaundiced and horrible before. In fact, I wonder how bad it is compared with the, with the case now. <laughs> In fact, the case looks more yellow than the C2N. And, uh, yeah, not bad at all. So um, that's uh, saved me uh, going out and getting some more hydrogen peroxide and having to cook that for a few days. So, excellent. Right, um, let's get on and rebuild the C2N. So, here we are from uh, previous. Uh, this cassette counter belt, it's just a little bit a little bit tight. I'm not, I'm not entirely happy with it. So uh, we're going to find something a little bit bigger than that. Let's uh, try our new belts. Hopefully there'll be uh, something in here that will do. And, uh, oh, that looks... Uh, Bit more like it. Is that any bigger? Yeah, that's a bit bigger. That's a bit bigger still. Let's try that one. And wiggle that into position. Yeah, that's uh, that's much better. It's only got to drive the counter. There's no uh, real torque going through it. Right, then we need a, a long one to go around here that's uh, going to be okay at the job oh yeah that's uh, looks okay doesn't it very little slippage that's uh, that's quite suitable brilliant uh, so we need to tighten that back up uh, we shall use a manual screwdriver for that just take the float off the capstan I think nearly bit too much but too tight perfect okay <coughs> so that is our C2N at least mechanically serviced so yeah let's uh, get it back in the uh, less yellowed case I'm going to leave those belts there for a minute I must reorganize the belt parts because it's now no longer big enough I can have we've gone mad and purchased 300 odd belts so yeah right so that fits back to uh, I think what we need to do first maybe is to replace that uh, spring that opens the door for us and that sort of goes in like that yeah that's good okay And back into the case slots in uh, slots in quite nicely there Got some screws to go back in lovely I should not be able to use the electric to do these Try not to get my head in the way of the camera. Always a problem. So I'll just uh, insert that. Well, that'd be better off if I sat down, really. Let's have a seat. There. Lovely. And the last one that just uh, goes in there. <coughs> I 
Now let's just uh, make sure everything works as it should. So that latch is operating. Okay, and there's no real obstructions there. So we shall uh, put that cable gland back in. Grommet rather. And, uh, and attempt to reassemble the case. The yellowing on this bottom, by the way, was very much... Uh, the, the bottom was very much whiter than the, the sides. You see, we're pr pretty even now. Quite pleased with that, really. Uh, so we've got three screws left and three screws to go in. That's good news. Serial number 273968. Bless it. Uh, right, just the lid. Right, the lid. This goes in like that. Now, this spring, don't forget, has to sit in this groove here. So, just get it all sort of lined up a bit. Make sure that spring is going to run in that. Uh, Groove okay. I think it's going to have to be a I'll hinge that in after we've got these side pieces in. I'm just going to squeeze up slightly. Yep. Then I can tuck the spring round with this pair of needle nose pliers. Nearly in the right place. Just got to take it round the bottom and then up under onto the groove. And I missed. <laughs> Let's do it again. Oof. Brilliant. I think you'll agree that looks very smart. So um, next thing I suppose is uh, we'd better see if it actually works. Okay, so um, we got our VIC-20 uh, connected to our monitor. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get the sound to root through to the frame grabber, which is a shame, but it's coming out of the monitor. Uh, we've got our freshly refurbished C2N uh, with our VIC-20. Look at the difference in colours, it's it's not bad, is it? There is a slight bit of, bit of yellowy maybe to the VIC-20, but I'll tell you what, the C2N is a lot better than it was. Um, I've got an Atari uh, joystick plugged into the joystick port. Fabulous. Uh, we've got some cassettes. I've got uh, The Catch, whatever that is. Um, we've got Quackers, yeah, lovely. Uh, I've got Invader 4. The invaders have returned. Blast them before they touch the ground. So, yeah, that's Space Invaders, isn't it? That, I suspect, is some sort of duck shoot, isn't it? Quackers. Looks like it. What about the catch? Then we've got uh, Frogger and uh, Scramble with a K. Scramble on the VIC-20, unexpanded. Um, that's going to be something a bit special, isn't it? Uh, but oh, I think we'll try good old Frogger to start with. Uh, Rabbit Software, 1983. Very good. Uh, switch the Vic on. Push our cassette in. Shift, run, stop. Press play on tape. I have pressed play on tape. Frogger. Keyboard or joystick for the unexpanded Vic 20. Brilliant. Rabbit Software from Harrow in Middlesex. Bless them. Right, let's see if the um, C2N will perform. Found hopper loading. 
Frogger Hopper. I wonder if Rabbit Software were a little bit uh, worried that they'd uh, pinch somebody's copyright. You can guarantee they were. Right. <laughs> of course, this is unexpanded, so there can only be a sort of maximum of 5k on there um, if they switch the kernels out. So, yeah. Won't be a very long wait, will it? Hey, and we're on. Okay, I seem to remember how this goes. Oh, oh, ah, oh. Yes, it's, oh, oh it's uh, dead already. <laughs> yes, this is definitely Frogger. I definitely remember this. I don't remember what those black, th black bits are, though. No. Oh, my goodness, no, dead. Uh, maybe I should start my own stream channel later. Right, this maze thing, I think I've got to be a bit careful going through here, because I bet if I hit the walls, I die. There we go. So, onto the thing. Then we're back on that one. Oh dear, we're running out there. Another go at it. Oh, in the drink. Dead. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we've got good sound. At least coming from the monitor, so... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, never was any good at computer games. Right, so that's um, fabulous news, isn't it? Our C2N's working, the vic 20s working, the joystick port's working. That's all very good. There is a problem, however, with the Hyper Expander. So um, we need to take a look at that. There we are. I think uh, we'll leave that there. I'm going to go away and uh, practice at uh, getting better at Frogger. Um, we have got a problem, as I mentioned, with the Hyper Expander, and we've still got to build that uh, C2 interface um, to plug into the back of our VIC as an easy way of uh, loading stuff we've downloaded from the internet onto our VIC 20. Uh, we've currently got a heatwave in the UK, um, which uh, means that the VIC 20 is just in the garden at the moment, having a little level up. See if we can get it to the same shade that the C2N uh, has got to um, with a bit of sun bleaching. So uh, that's where we are with everything. Anyway, I'm off. I might have a go at that scramble as well. That looks very good. Uh, take care. Click like, subscribe, all that. And I'll see you very soon in the next one here at Dozzy's Television Workshop. Cheers now.